Real Talk is proudly sponsored by Huawei P20 Pro and MTN. Each week for 10 weeks, we're giving away the latest Huawei P20 Pro and 10 gigabytes once-off MTN data to 10 amazing storytellers. All you have to do is share your special moments with us. Follow at Huawei ZA and at MTN ZA and tag us with hashtag Huawei P20 and hashtag Real Talk Moments. We want to see and hear your stories and create lasting connections across the country. Each week, there's a different theme. So keep checking our social pages for details and you could be a winner. It's been 31 years of multiple marriages, affairs, catfights, company takeovers, and general drama on one of the longest running soapies of our time. Millions of fans in over 100 countries around the world have followed the story of the Forrester family and their fashion house business, Forrester Creations. Here's a trip down memory lane with one of the original four cast members of The Bold and the Beautiful, who also cemented herself as one of the most exciting TV characters on the most watched soapy in history. If you take my stock, you win. Either way, I win. I'll win once and for all. I finally beaten you, Stephanie. Will you take Ridge to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and cherish him in sickness and in health? Forsaking all others, be faithful to him all the days of your life? I will. You know, I've studied all kinds of sexual disorders, but in all the time that I've done that research, I have never come across this particular pathology. I don't know, maybe you could shed a little light on it for me. Maybe uh, you could tell me how it is, you know, thinking that your husband had just died, you can become aroused by his brother. Well, please, honey, I really need to talk to you about this. Uh, that's for Bridget. Stephanie! That's, that's for Hope. And get the hell out of here. I'm telling you, your daughter is never going to be around you again. <gasps> you <sighs> Oh, no. I haven't even begun to give you what you deserve. Your days of bullying me are over, Stephanie. Oh, really? Over? Oh. Oh. My heart is beating so, so fast just watching all of that drama. And with that, it is a pleasure to welcome onto Real Talk, Catherine Kelly Lang. Aww, what was it like watching you. that? How are you? Hi, good. I'm good. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> that was incredible. I mean, that's crazy to see all those years ago. It's Sometimes I don't even remember some of those scenes, except, of course, the very dramatic ones with Susan, you know, playing Stephanie and, yes. and of course, Taylor. and. You know, all that rivalry was so much fun. And it's starting to happen again in, mm -hmm. in Brooke's life right now. So, so that's fun as well. Oh, it was nice to go down. And all those slaps. 
Oh, I know. Did you ever keep telling you? That one that you saw, the double slap yeah. that uh, Stephanie did to Brooke, she slapped me once like this, then she slapped me like this. Yeah. I had to go see my chiropractor after that. Oh, my Afterward. goodness. Yeah, I couldn't move my neck. <laughs> Ooh, uh, and so she gave it her all. Oh, Those are yeah. real. It's not oh, like she didn't hold back. No, she always slapped like she was really slapping. I'm sure she gives you a hug afterwards. Um, I don't remember the <laughs> hug. I don't really, we're good friends, but I don't remember a hug, actually. It's the job and yeah. what it requires. Well, welcome to South Africa. Thank you. So what was your perception? I know you've been here, what, a couple of times. This is your second? Actually, just, I've just been to Sun City judging Miss World in 89, yeah. I think it was. And, and that was a lot of fun. But all I saw was Sun, Sun City for like two days. Mm. And then flew home. I flew in and out. Um, so this is wonderful to, to get a chance to spend some time. Last week we were in Port Elizabeth for like a week mm -hmm. and then I raced in the um, Ironman World Championship in yeah. Port Elizabeth and then now I'm here and I'll be in Cape Town for a couple of days and then home. You did the <coughs> Ironman. So your level of fitness can probably put a lot of 20 year olds to shame. I'm pretty fit for, yeah, doing endurance racing. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So how did you find it? Where did you, did you get a medal? I have a finisher's medal. It's big and heavy like that. And, mm -hmm. and that's amazing to have one of those from the world championships. I've done three world championship half Ironman and I've done the one full wor world championship Ironman mm -hmm. in Kona, which is the biggest race that you can do in triathlon. So um, I've been doing it for five years and I really enjoy it. What does your fitness regime include, especially preparing for something like this? Well, you have to swim, bike, and run. Mm -hmm. So I have a coach. She lives in Colorado, Siri Lindley. And she um, just gives me a training plan, and I follow that. And she works with my busy schedule because sometimes I can't fit it in. And, I, you know, I say, sorry, I didn't get my swim in today. What should I do tomorrow? And, you know, so she'll work with me and, and do as much as we can. I've been traveling so much. Also, it's been hard to train. Yeah. But I still got through the race great and did a good job, and I felt good. And enjoyed the sights along the way. And mm -hmm. the people were so amazing. I mean, in Port Elizabeth, they were all out. They all came out and they stood for the run portion of it, stood along the sidelines and they were cheering and clapping and saying, yay, go Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people were saying Kelly, but most people said Brooke. <laughs> and um, it kept me going through that whole half marathon because I wanted to stop. I wanted to not stop, yes. but I wanted to walk. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I couldn't walk because everybody was there. I would have been embarrassed, you know, I would have been. Arr. So I, I kept going and they pushed me through. Their we have this me. race called the Comrades Marathon, 89 kilometers. Um, that it's a marathon, it's what, an ultra marathon. Um, and one of our leading winners in this country, marathon runners, he's won it like 10 times, Bruce Fordyce. He talks about what that kind of exercise tells you about yourself, what you discover about yourself. I think that's why I really love it. Because people wonder, why are you doing endurance sports? Mm. You know, but I love the distance. I love the length because once you're finished, it's such an accomplishment. And it kind of just gives you that sense of, of strength of, um, it gives you, first of all, you're motivated to train, mm -hmm. to be able to do that distance. And then to accomplish that is another thing. And it just kind of gives you a sense of self, what, what you can really do. You know, doing physical sports like that truly is amazing for everybody, even starting young, yeah. all the way through their whole life. I know 80 year olds that are doing Ironman. Wow. Well, Ironman, you know, the, the I don't know in kilometers, but in mm -hmm. the half Ironman, it's like 120 kilometers total. So the full Ironman, well, it would be double than that. And I can't do my math right now. <laughs> so that would be 240, 240. I'm not going to help. I'm hopeless <laughs> no, on, with the conversion. Two, 240 kilometers. So that's a long distance. But all ages can do it. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm on, I also encourage women to get involved because it does a lot to empower women in the sport. Yes, and yeah. to prove to yourself that you prove can do it. it. Anything is possible. And you have a cause as well that was driving you to also do this. You're, you're all about break away from cancer, this initiative that you started. So it's also important. Well, I didn't start this initiative, but <laughs> oh. but I'm w with working with break away from cancer. Mm -hmm. It was um, in 2005 they started it. 
uh, it's uh, and from Amgen, which is the company that uh, also has a bike race, California, Tour of California. But I'm one of the ambassadors for Breakaway from Cancer, and they cover all aspects of, you know, they take you by the hand and they walk you through the whole process. There's, it's all about prevention, it's about cancer support, financial aid, and then survivorship. And there's four nonprofits within Breakaway from Cancer. Mm -hmm. My father passed away when I was 13. So that spurred me on later in my life to really try to get involved with a cancer charity and do some good there because cancer's just taken over. Yes, I mean, yes. so many people are inflicted with cancer and then of course how it affects the families and everything and there more needs to be done and so this really helps people. I remember when I was a, a young child that I would just watch my father just kind of whittle away to nothing, you mm. know, and it's like where is everybody? Who can help? What can be done here? You know, nobody had the answers. The doctors didn't even really know what to do. And now it's gotten better. It's definitely progressed. And there's yes. a lot more you know, advocacy out there to be able to help people with cancer. So that's really important to me. I mean, there's a few other causes I'm working with as well, with Women for Try, mm -hmm. which is supporting women, getting women into the sport of triathlon, something that we all love doing and um, helping them, even if they don't even know how to swim or bike or anything, just helping them from the start, getting them involved to be able to accomplish some yes. of these goals that they want I'll to I'll set out the bike riding, hopeless at it. <laughs> yeah, there's a, a women's group, I think in uh, Port Elizabeth, where it's based, I think there's 80 women now on the triathlon club, mm -hmm. that they support women, they raise money and they help them start their dreams of triathlon, and most of them don't even know how to swim. So yes. they're starting from, from nothing to going to about, I think, seven months of training to go into their first half Ironman. Mm -hmm. So that's impressive. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be done. It can be done. Can and be we done. have a great source of encouragement and motivation <laughs> in you. Um, you. So we are taking your calls this evening. So make sure that you use this opportunity to chat to my guest. That's Catherine Kelly Lang, who plays Brooke Logan on The Bold and the Beautiful. <laughs> so we've got Pindile. Pindile, thank you so much for calling in. Good evening. Evening, how are you? Very good, thank you. You can go ahead and chat to Catherine. Hello, Catherine Kelly Lang. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what a person. Hi. And what a character. My question is, um, okay, here in South Africa, I think we're three years back with the bold and the beautiful, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. A year. Have you watched the episode that we are seeing here? And can you maybe give us a little bit of a sneak peek as to what is happening in your timeline on the other side? And you're an amazing person, by the way, an amazing character. <laughs> Wait, okay, I wasn't sure I got exactly no, that whole because question. we're behind, so yeah, she's about quite a excited year, about, I think. about a year. Yeah, I think yeah. so. So she's, because you mentioned earlier that the drama and the tension is kind of coming back in Brooke's life. I know, I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to say. <laughs> <laughs> Looking around the studio. Looking for permission, forget that. But we have, um, I've been saying for a while, okay, Brooke needs to get involved in something more than just sitting at home and being involved with a man. She's, you know, she's, she's, she created Belief Formula, which was the wrinkle-free yeah. formula years ago. She was CEO a number of times, and um, she created Taboo, the men's line with Thomas. She created Brooke's Bedroom, the lingerie line. She's done a lot of things. She's a good businesswoman. And so she's sitting at home now <laughs> doing nothing. <laughs> but so I keep saying, get, she's got to get involved, got to get, get involved. So I'm hoping she has a great storyline like that coming up, but also she's doing some other fun things. And I don't really want to give it away because yes. it's a yes. lot of fun, but it, it did um, air this month in America. All right. So you guys will see it in a year. We'll see it in a year. <laughs> That's the travesty of it all. <laughs> but we're still spending time over the next hour with actress Catherine Kelly Lang. And we're taking your calls. You can do what Pindile did. If you have a comment or a question, phone us right now. The lines are open to you. Well, after the break, we'll be rewinding the clock and going right back to the very beginning of Catherine's career. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Real Talk here on SABC3. The stage is yours. Now we know that for a lot of you, the bold and the beautiful has been a part of your upbringing. Having been exposed to it uh, through the show, mostly through your mothers, your grandmothers and your aunts. Well, let's take a look at some of the reasons why fans just can't get enough of the show. And of course, the unforgettable Brooke Logan. I just love the whole game. It's more of like a game, to be honest, because it was never really specific. It wasn't really about love. It wasn't also about hate. It was just a mixture of both emotions. Brooke's character, uh, she was one of those, you know, I don't know. She she was she would go for anything she wants, actually. Whatever he had tells her, she would go for it. So I just love it. I just love that about it. I love the way the foster, uh, foster families is how the, the whole soap involves around those that around that family and around those culprits gonna come queen to cause the havoc in that family. Uh, the bold and beautiful has got too much scandals, uh, family dramas, you know, all those things that's happening. Especially this lady who visited South Africa now. A blessing to men. I love you so much. There were a lot of scandals. <laughs> Um, what I can say that um, there's cheating, lying, <laughs> backstabbing. Uh, I'd say Brooke is very busy. Yeah, uh, yeah she's, she's all over the place. She's always, if it's not uh, the, someone else, it's, if it's not him, it's, yeah, she's, she's always busy. I wonder what that busy is. She should have defined it for us. What do you mean by busy? Well, before there was Brooke Logan, Catherine Kelly Lang had been making inroads in front of the camera. And she was born into the show business family. She grew up in Hollywood, California, and she appeared alongside Patrick Swayze in the movie Skate Town USA. She also bagged roles in TV shows such as Magnum P.I. I used mm -hmm. to love that show. Uh, and in addition to that, she made appearances in several Beach Boys music videos. So let's go back. Let's go back to those early parts of your career. Um, so you're like, it seems like you're like that classic California girl. Do you agree? I Active. think so. I mean, I was born and raised in Los Angeles and I grew up at the beaches and around. I was, I definitely loved nature and I still do, but I grew up surfing and horseback riding yeah. and in the mountains and traveling. and. Just definitely love Southern California and, and that whole environment. So yes, I, I would say that. Mm -hmm. And I also grew up in the entertainment business because my grandpa was a famous, very famous cinematographer. Yes. He got 18 nominations for the films that he made and he also won an Academy Award. That's incredible. And he had a 40 year career. I mean, he, he was incredible. Mostly black and white films. So he shot everybody from Marilyn Monroe to Elizabeth Taylor to Audrey Hepburn. He was known to make the woman look beautiful. Wow. So he knew all the lighting, all the special effects. A any movie that you saw from, if you ever saw black and white films, mm -hmm. I mean, he did most of them. And, and your mom was an actress. My mom was an actress. Because of that, she ended up doing mostly commercials. She would sometimes do like 250 commercials a year, which was wow. crazy. And uh, she did some TV shows. And my father also was the Jolly Green Giant. Now that is um, a character that did commercials on TV that was selling like canned vegetables. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, so he had that role. So and if you grew up in America, you would know who the Jolly Green Giant is because everybody knows. And uh, he was the Jolly Green Giant till he passed away. But wasn't he an Olympic skier? Well, he was well. an Olympic skier. He started out in sports mm. and he was an amazing skier and he was in the Olympics for the ski jump. Uh, which is very brave. I, I can. I have all, all these old pictures of him flying through the air with little wooden skis and lace-up boots. Back then, it was, you know, different kind of technology. Yes. Or no technology. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so he was amazing. And then my mom also was in sports, and she was in the Junior Olympics for swimming. Sure. So I grew up in a very athletic family. And it seems like you've so kept up with both of these yeah these I have. Types of the, the heritage that you got from both of you're them. right it's kind of ingrained in me mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and it is four years of being in the entertainment for um, generations yeah being in the entertainment business and 
Um, so I grew up doing commercials. I grew up doing print work. I was always in that kind of world. And then when I was 17 and I graduated from high school, I got my first movie, which was playing uh, Pat Patrick Swayze's sister yeah. in Skate Town, USA. And then I thought, oh, for sure, this is what I want to do. Wow. I just, because you were, I just went for it. You used to ride horses. Yeah. Love for horses. Love for horses. Sort of being a jockey. Yeah. But was it that love? Is that where the film industry captured you? Well, I wanted to be a jockey <laughs> when I was younger, but then, of course, I grew too tall. And later on, when I was doing some of my uh, TV projects in mm -hmm. different, I appeared in a lot of different TV shows before I got on The Bold and the Beautiful. And from one of those jobs, I took the money and I bought a horse, and I was like my early 20s, and I started racing, doing endurance racing. So I did endurance racing, 50 mile, 100 mile endurance races for 25 years or so. Mm -hmm. Horseback. Yeah. Wow. Horseback through the mountains. And so there was never really a choice for you. It was always this awareness that you would always have both of them, or you could always do both of them. I guess you want to do what you love, right? Yeah. I, I always loved acting and uh, always loved horses ever since I was little. And, mm -hmm. and I wanted all of that in my life. And so I made it happen. And now with your children, is it what Jeremy and Julian? Mm -hmm. They featured on The Bold and the Beautiful as well. How did that come about? Well, I have um, four children, Jeremy, Julian, Danielle, and um, who did I not list? Yeah. Jeremy, Julian, Danielle, and Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> I lost track for a moment. I'm yeah. tired. <laughs> We're not going to ask you about their dates of birth, their birthdays, <laughs> because don't. I know parents, <laughs> we muddle that up. Oh, I used to mix up their names even when I had, you know, was calling them. And, uh, Jer Julian, Dan oh. Yeah. But um, yeah, they're, they're, now they're 20, 28. 27, 26, and 21. Mm. So they're all out on their own. They are all, you know, doing their own thing and own jobs and own lives. And so that gives us time to travel and do all the things that we're doing right now. Yes. So now they're acting as well. Is that the, especially for these two? They well, they don't. The okay. So Jeremy played my son on the show for the first four years of his life. Yeah. And then they aged my character because they always do that to give the young kids a storyline create something. Mm -hmm. So they aged him to be from four to eight. So then he couldn't play the part anymore. And um, they don't age us, but they just age the kids. I yes. don't know how that works, but it does. And then my daughter, she never, she did a little parts here and there. She did a commercial, mm -hmm. she did a little part in a film. You know, she's done some modeling, stuff like that. But she's, right now she's studying to get her real estate license. And my oldest son is now editing for a TV show and producing. Yeah, so. is it easier when you have someone in the game already? And what happens as well if you're the parent and maybe your child doesn't get the kind of breakthrough that they would have wanted? No, it's I don't easier. think so. Mm. I mean, you know, I think everything in life, it's kind of networking and you have to get out there and you can't just sit on the couch and expect something to come to you. So you gotta get out there and work it and make, make what, whatever you ha want to happen in your life happen. Yeah. Um, so basically that's what they need to do. I don't think, I don't also like try, like handing them something because mm. they need to earn it because they won't then respect it basically. You know what I mean? And they may not take it seriously. So mm. they, they need to create their life. Uh -huh. Do you remember your audition for the bold and the beautiful? <laughs> I do, I do. It was with John McCook. He was already hired to play Eric. Yes. And so they brought me in and read me with the casting director. She liked me, so she had me come back and read for the producers and directors. They liked me, so they decided to put me on tape. And I did my scene with John McCook, and he was the most loving, kind, sweetest gentleman ever yes and I do I tell him this I say I, I got this job because of you mm -hmm. because he made me feel so safe and so secure and so positive and made me feel that I could do it because usually in those interviews or put, being put on tape you get really nervous and like <gasps> <gasps> your heart's beating 100 and I'm sweating and you, you can't remember, remember your, your lines, lines and yeah. expressions and so he just made put me completely at ease and I just walked right in there and just you know, did the whole thing. He ran it with me a couple times and I was just, I nailed it, but it was because of him and how yeah. he, he set the, set the feeling for me. Well, we've got Phyllis. Phyllis is on the line also. Good evening, Phyllis. Thank you for calling in. Hello. How are you? We're good. Thank you. Phyllis, you can go ahead. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Um, it's very nice to, to, you know, 
Um, hi, hi. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> You're getting tongue tied and starstruck, Phyllis. And it's very nice to have this opportunity to talk to Brooke. Um, it's, I've been watching Brooke since I was in primary. Right now, I'm, I'm 35 years old. I've been watching um, Brooke. That's for a while now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah for, I've been did you in the crib? Yeah, since I've, I, I was in primary, I think it was 13 years, um, 12 years old. Right. Wow. And uh, I remember it was a soapy. During the time of Hope, when Hope was, was in the program, and I used to watch it, and I used to be very excited. Um, just to tell you, Brooke, I really love you. You're a great character. Um, um, my regards to the former Ridge. You remember the former Ridge? Oh, yes. Yeah, and I really love you, Brooke. You never grow old. You're always young. Sweet. You're always happy. You just make me smile. I really, really, oh. I'm a great fan. That was I'm very nice. Thank, Thank you for the call, Phyllis. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Such kind words. That's so sweet. I think <laughs> always surprise you because the show is in what, 100 countries? It, yeah, it's in 100 countries. 35, 36 million people watch it every single day. Incredible. I mean, when I think of those numbers, it it kind of scares me. Like, oh, I don't want to know that. Because then you start thinking, oh, you know, what yeah. people think, or, you know, all that stuff. And it's amazing. It's really incredible. And still to this day, you know, quite quickly when it started airing, it became, it was a huge hit everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it stayed that way. And we still go to Monte Carlo and accept this award for being the most watched television show, uh, telenovela soap opera in the world, in the world. <coughs> which is really incredible if yes. you think about it. Yes. And um, it's just, I love that. I, I love to be a part of something so amazing. And we'll talk a little bit more about that yeah. after the break, um, because there's still so much to dissect about why this particular mm -hmm. property, the soapy, has gone on with the kind of success that it has for all these years. So if there's one thing that soapies across the world have proven time and time again, it's that power, that power of sucking us into all the different storylines. So after the break, we're getting Catherine's insights into the soapy business. Welcome back to Real Talk here on SABC3. The stage is yours. Well, we're still in conversation with bold and beautiful actress Catherine Kelly Lang. And uh, when, when you've been a part of people's lives for so long, like we touched on just before the break, the way she has, through her role as Brooke Logan on The Bold and the Beautiful, it really stands to reason that fans will feel like they know you, you know, that they own you. But how much do fans really know about Brooke? So we decided to hit the streets and put some of the fans uh, through a quick Q&A just to find out. Take a look. I think Brooke was married almost about 10 times. 
six. Yo, plus minus ten times. <laughs> it's been more than ten times. Yeah, plus minus yeah. that, but yeah, a lot. I don't know, I think ten times. <laughs> well, three or four times. Yo, I've lost track, really. <laughs> I've lost track. Yo, I think Yo. more than 20 times. <laughs> really times. Ah, she is. <laughs> she married rich, divorced rich, married Don, divorced Don, had a child with rich, married that child. <laughs> true. Very much true, because she's quite a character. Well, it's true. Even if you don't want to believe it, it's true. I don't really recall the other one, but Taylor was one of them. I still remember Taylor, and I don't really remember the other one's name. But uh, she she also had a thing with her sister also, so she had many, but Taylor was one of them. Taylor, Queen. I think that was the mother-in-law. Yeah. yeah, that was the mother-in-law. I remember it very well. With the gray hair. Taylor, Stefano, yeah. just so interesting. What did you think of those answers? Well, I, you know, I think some of them were right. Yes. I, I don't even know myself. How many times exactly has Exactly how married? many times Brooke has been married. Um, I want to say, I think about seven times to Ridge, but 10 attempts, you know, almost getting married and then not, because somebody breaks up the ceremony, wedding mm. ceremony. Mm. Um, but that's all to Ridge. And then, of course, yes, there was Ridge's the father one. and Ridge's brother. <laughs> um, there was Whip, but that was kind of a cover-up marriage. There was Grant, and then that marriage ended up not being real. Yes. So, I can't remember who else it was. <laughs> but, you know, I it's forget stories. more than seven. Stories. Safe to say more than seven. Yeah. 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 About ten. Okay. So, they were ballpark. But right. in Brooke's defense, mm -hmm. it's because... <laughs> Los Angeles is a very small world on the bold and the beautiful. Yes, there are only <laughs> There's 10 men. There's a small, char small <laughs> amount of characters, and <laughs> it's a half-hour show, and our characters kind of keep going round and round among the same families. Yes, you know? but do you so think she's done something for, for women in the sense that in keeping and helping the world change, in keeping up with the things that people are talking about, uh, in advancing women's places and their position in society, that there's something to be said for what she's done in terms of wow. living your life on your own terms. I don't know. Falling in love and marrying whoever you want. Well, okay, that's a kind of, of another subject, but I like what you're saying, and I hope so, I hope so, but um, most people, when they think of it negatively, they think that I'm, what Brooke was doing it for the wrong reasons. Yes. You know, just taking what you want and being selfish and, you know, loving one man and discarding him and, and doing all that. But really, I just think she was um, confused, mm -hmm. <laughs> but she was following her heart and, um, and sometimes that led her in the wrong places. And I think she had a lot of growing up to do. And I think she has. She kept making the same mistakes over and over mm, and over again. Absolutely. But you know what? That's real life sometimes. It is. Exactly. That we happens. All have our and sometimes people never learn their lessons. So it's kind of interesting. And I would even get frustrated with her. I'm like, this is ridiculous already. She's got to learn from these mistakes, th these you, crazy decisions that she's making. You know, you but are, you're part of the original four cast members. So you've been there along with the other three, of course, the longest. So surely, do you have any input? The, in terms of the writing and the creativity around the storyline. I leave line. that to the writers. Okay. I think, you know what, they do such a great job. They've been writing the show for a long time. Most of them have been there for a long time, some of the same writers. Of course, Brad Bell being the head writer. Yes. <clears throat> used to be his father and his mom, Lee Philip Bell, Bill Bell, who started the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was incredible from day one. And then when Brad took over, he kind of changed it, made it a little more modern. Yeah. He really updated all of the, the cameras, the uh, stages, the sets, the technology. Mm -hmm. He would take us out of the studio a lot. We, we shot around the world. We shot, I don't know, I think I want to say seven times in Italy, shot a couple times in Australia, a few right. times in Monaco, Monte Carlo, uh, Mexico, Aspen. Mm -hmm. Am I missing places? I probably am. But you know, he took us out and we did uh, remotes, which is really fun. And I think for the audience as well, because they get to see, you know, maybe Absolutely. they don't have a chance to travel, but they get to see where we go and, and kind of get uh, a view of different places around the world. But was there ever parts of the storyline, because she has been controversial, 
over the years. Yes. Was there a storyline where you got nervous about acting it? Because um, you in yes. different countries and different countries have different cultures, different right. value systems. Yes. So was there nervousness ever? First of all, I'm not saying people should go out and do what Brooke does. Yeah. I do like the fact that, you know, when you want something, go for it. But it it's shouldn't be hurtful to other people yes. and destroying other people's lives. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as her in business and when she believed in herself so much and she would make things happen and things like that, I think that's great. But not to, you know, go be around with a lot of different men. Um, <clears throat> But she was an and she's an interesting character to play yeah, for that absolutely. reason. Absolutely. So uh, I, I hope I'm not a role model in that respect, but I do like to be a role model and I love to support women and and you know be there for them and let them know that they can be the best that they want to be and and branch out and you know we don't need to sit behind the man we can get out there and do our own thing you know Absolutely. women are, are very powerful and very smart so what's the relationship do you think that fans have do they love to hate or do they hate that i that they love her you know <laughs> well you i get it? a mix uh, a mixture of people so that's what's interesting for me to play this character because i get to walk this this fine line and not get become too bad of a character or evil or whatever mm -hmm. and not too good either because that's boring and then you don't have a storyline yeah so <laughs> you kind of um i like to relate to brooke as a real person you know and uh with a good heart and she means well, well and she just yes. makes mistakes and uh gets herself in trouble sometimes yeah. but um i just like it because people relate to her for that reason so i do have people that hate her but hate they her. love to hate her and then i have people that love her no matter what she does absolutely and will support her no matter what and so that's what you want interesting. someone who divides yeah. who's divisive mm -hmm. and who creates conversation right let's go to diane diane thank you for calling us you're in durban good evening hello hi diane how are you we're good thank you go ahead and chat to Catherine. okay let me talk to Catherine? Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> hello, uh, hello, Catherine, how are you? Hi, good, thank you, how are it's you? I am from Durban. Yes. Hi, from Durban. I just <laughs> want to tell you, you're an amazing woman, and it's lovely to have you in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Thank you, it's been amazing so far. And have a beautiful time while you're in South Africa. Thank, thank you, so thank you so much, much. thank, thank you. you. All right, so, so um, we'll explore some of the things that um, Catherine will be doing in South Africa while she's here. And not just that, uh, we'll also look at the role that she'll be playing on Isidingo. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's something to look forward to on Isidingo tomorrow as she'll be featuring in our own local Sophie. More on that after the break.
Welcome back to Real Talk on SABC3. The stage is yours. My guest today has been the bold and the beautiful actress Catherine Kelly Lang. Um, she's danced with the Umhlobo Wenene's BEE breakfast show, uh, that entire team, they had a great time. She competed in the Ironman World Championships in Port Elizabeth, and she's been taking in some of our popular historic sites in this country. And she'll be moving on to Cape Town after this. But before that, Isi Dingo lovers will get to see you on a much loved soapy locally. So what is the extent of your involvement? What is your role about? Um, I'm just visiting, it, we did it so fast today. It was amazing. It's like, let's get in, let's do these scenes. And they were all prepared for me to kind of come in and get them done so they could air tomorrow. Yes. And um, so it's very quick, but I'm visiting and staying at the hotel there and I can't remember the name of the hotel in, mm -hmm. in the show. Mm -hmm. Do you know the name? I think it's Pocamoso. Yeah. Something is yeah. so. So it was just a scene about visiting and staying there, and they prepared a nice dinner for me, and then I come down in the morning and and chat with my friend. So as Brooke Logan, as as myself, as actually. Catherine. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Yeah. Also, the hype is all about the yeah. fact that Catherine is in town and she yeah. plays this role of Brooke. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's exciting. So it was fun. Yeah, was fun. So our viewers, of course, is a dingo viewers can expect to see that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But let's just look at a few things about the soapy or the the entire business. We I remember a couple of years ago the Big Bang Theory actors, the male actors, wanted to make sure that the female co-stars had the same pay. So they opted not to have an increase so that the female cast members could have that increase. How's the gender pay gap? Uh, because it's also one of those topical issues at the moment across different industries. How have you experienced it in Hollywood and on The Bold and the Beautiful? I don't know, because we don't talk about each other's Oh, <laughs> you don't say. Yeah. No, we don't know. So I think that it's pretty fair. I think it's more like, you know, the longer you've been there, possibly. But I know it has been an issue in Hollywood, and not just Hollywood, in many different industries for, for a long time. But it's gotten better. Yeah. I know it's gotten better. And um, it's all about just, you know, fighting for that cause and making sure that uh, we got to step women up. We got to make them. They are equal. So mm. why are, are they not being treated equal? You know, so um, that's my belief. And I, I truly think it's it's getting better. I know the problem now is not so much trying to make it fair for women or for men or whatever, but it's just everybody's getting cut. I mean, the, the whole industry is just trying to do everything very inexpensively. I see. <laughs> Except, of course, the blockbuster films. Mm -hmm. But the TV shows and all the shows are just trying to, you know, they have a budget. They're trying to meet their budget and get and everything done quickly it. and still still well done. But, yeah, stick okay. to it. So. Well, before we wrap up, I want to play a game with you. That is your, your little plaque with your answers on it. Mm -hmm. Never, ever. Never have I ever. Do I hold that? Yes, okay. and then you give me your responses <laughs> okay, uh -oh. based on either side. I have and I have never. So, never have I ever not left a tip for a waiter or waitress. Have you or never? Never have I ever. Now I'm confused about the whole <laughs> thing. No, it's like Only a two answers. negative. <laughs> Whether you have or you haven't. I, I, I have never, never? never? You've left without leaving oh, wait, a this tip. This could take a while. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always leave a tip. You always so leave I a tip. I would say... You have never. I have never. There we go. Never not. There we go. See, that's a double negative. I have never not left a tip. Fantastic. Never have I ever had a guy dump me. Have you ever? Or has it never happened to you? <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember. <laughs> Wait, is there, I d and I don't remember. Card. Okay, okay, <laughs> you can opt for that one. Oh Never have God. I ever been skinny dipping. As Catherine, not as Oh, good. I have. So I have. I yes. have? There we go. I there have we been go. Skin skinny dipping. You have? Yes. Mm. Oh, so it'd be this? That one. <laughs> That's one. That's the answer. Never <laughs> have I ever had a crush on one of my co-stars. Oh, I'm sure somewhere in my life I have had a crush on my one of my co-stars. Yes, definitive. Yes, so yeah, you I have. have. The yeah. other side. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. All right. <laughs> I need so help with this. <laughs> never have I ever snooped through someone's phone without them knowing. I have never. Really? I have never done that. No. No, Swear I just think that's rude. No, I just think that's horrible. Uh -huh. That's really crossing the line of privacy. <laughs> okay. So, 
I have. Never. Never. Fantastic. Snooped. Um, and another one, let's see. Never have I ever pressed send on an email and immediately regretted it. Oh, well, no. What I've done is send an email to the wrong person or a text. So what does that count for? <laughs> okay, it doesn't what quite count, but it doesn't count. <laughs> that slip of the finger. Yeah. All right. Oh, shoot. I sent that exactly. to the wrong person. Never have I ever borrowed something I promised to return but ended up keeping. These are, these are hard questions. Are they? Yeah. I you probably probably a sweater or something along the way, I'm sure. So you have. Oh, probably. So you have. Okay. Yeah, so I have. <laughs> Ter terrible. I, I promise to give it back. <laughs> <laughs> so you've broken promises too. Never have I ever not kept a promise. You've broken a promise as well. Uh, yeah. All right, so now. I think that wraps up our little game. No. You didn't do too badly. Oh, thank <laughs> you. I've never played a game like that. That was really interesting. Okay, now you can say you have. Never have I ever not I played a game like that. I have never ever played a game like have I ever. Never. So you've been playing Brooke for all these years. Um, does it, uh, has the thought crossed your mind that the time might come when you're not playing her? Um, it would be a sad day <laughs> because she's a part of me. I mean, 31 years to play the same character is like she's like a sister or something, you know, or a best friend. And, I'm not sure Brooke would be my best friend, but mm -hmm. um, she's so close to me that it would be strange. My life would seem almost empty without her. So, no so I mean, there's no, I've, I'm going strong on that show and will continue to for probably for as long as I possibly can. And I mean, it's an amazing opportunity yeah. to be on the bold and the beautiful and well, be able to do something I like to do. That you're not going anywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's definitely yeah. been a lot of fun spending time with actress Kelly Lang as she enjoys her stay in South Africa. Well, you can catch more of her tomorrow night um, as she stars on Isi Dingo. We're saying goodbye to Catherine. And after this, we're bringing you hashtag real talk moments. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to chat you. Thank you. <laughs>Welcome back to Real Talk. Well, one of the causes that Catherine Kelly Lang has devoted her time to over the years is cancer. After having lost one, uh, one of her loved ones, in fact, to the condition, on our hashtag Real Talk Moments edition for this week, you will meet 10-year-old Tando, who was diagnosed with lymphoma. Let's meet her, take a look. How's it, Real Talk? Okay, at this stage, you guys know what this hashtag Real Talk Moments campaign is all about. It's all about connecting with people in need, people that you don't usually connect with, and sharing those very special moments. Now, today is quite uh, an emotional one because I'm meeting up with a young 10-year-old boy, and only last year he found out that he's got lymphoma, which is a rare type of cancer, and this young kid is fighting for his life. We're here at the Chalk House in Pretoria, and my goal is to hopefully just put a little smile on the kid's face. Hey guys. Hi, Yannis. How are you doing? Good Penelope. Good. Yes, Yannis, it is. nice yes. to meet you. Tando, are you the superhero? You're a strong <laughs> man, a professional soccer player. 
Tando's a special young kid and his zest for life, his energy, the love he has for his mother, the connection he has with his mother, it's so important. And I think the, the important thing is kids need support. It doesn't matter if it's a parent, a friend, or just a caregiver. As long as these kids are getting love and support, there's hope for them. What is lymphoma? Okay, lymphoma is a cancer that attacks the glands of the body. So, human, we have, uh, as humans, we have lots of glands on our chest. Most of them are in the brain. So, but on him, it was on his groin, since there was this one lump that was reddish and big, and then on his chest and on his neck. Because I would notice with these headaches, he would just appear lump here, but it would disappear again. Then it appears again, then it disappears. So, that's what lymphoma is. I didn't know about it too, but I learned along the way. You tell yourself, no, it's going to be better. Then at times, there's this certain time that he doesn't eat for a week. Chemo doesn't just allow him to eat. And when you ask him, are you hungry? Do you need something? He's like, no, I'm fine. Just water. Drinks water and that's it. And he won't, at, in, at that time, he won't even eat a burger mm -hmm. or pizza. He's Nothing. Just, he's just not interested in food. With the treatment, it breaks him down to zero because it kills all good cells and bad cells. He loves soccer, he plays soccer, but he gets tired easily. Okay. So that's how they are. Even walking a distance now, it's becoming a, a, a trouble, but he's getting there. But I'm, I'm hopeful he'll get back to normal soon. Well, it's a roller coaster, but I can't say you get used to it, you don't. But then you have to take it by both hands and just hold on, hoping things will work out very well. Are you ready to leave that TV game? Because yeah. I've got a good surprise for you. Yes. Yeah. Hey, I've got a nice surprise for you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, what's that? Okay, so I've brought in a Brazilian international clown of the year. Oh, really? And magician of the year. What? Throughout this campaign, the crux of it has been we are capturing moments, we are connecting with people, we're connecting with people in need, we're highlighting illnesses and conditions out there that people don't know about. And for that, I have to thank Huawei and MTN. Without you guys, none of this would be possible. Today's your special day, right? Yeah. Come, stand here with me. <laughs> so I'm so happy and glad to be here, and I'm so happy that you're going to be my helper. But before we start the magic show, we need to warm up our hands. Young Tando is so very brave. If anything, he is an inspiration to all kids out there, all young kids that are suffering from cancer. And trust me, there's a lot of them throughout South Africa. Because I promise you, this young boy, he's moving mountains, and one day he's going to become something. Watch this space. Well, my wish is, because I know that he has cancer, and that's for life. He has to take care of himself very well. I'm teaching him that he's good with that. But what I wish, I wish for him to just grow up and be what he wants to be. Because it's like to me, mom, I would love to help kids like me and become a doctor like Professor Rinders and help the kids. Because I could see what cancer does to us and I could see what it does to you parents. Sometimes, mom, you think I don't see you. I see you when you cry. I just don't say anything. But I know the pain that you're going through. And I'm like, I wish he could just grow up even more. Yeah. I'm just blown away by Tando's energy, about the positive spirit that his mother has. And it just proves that he is a beacon of light to all kids out there that are suffering from cancer. All people in there that are in difficult situations. And it, and it proves again that you can knock someone down countless times, but the human spirit is strong. They get up every single time. On behalf of our sponsors, the guys that make this possible, Huawei and MTN, I've got a little goodie bag for you full of technology. Maybe it can assist his gaming. I don't know what's in there. But, yeah, but can I ask you one last favor? Can we send Azania a nice message on my phone? Hey, I'm gonna send her a lovely message. Okay, Aza, we've had the most amazing day. This kid over here is super special and he's an example to all kids out there that are fighting cancer. He's been through absolutely the most. He's had the support of an incredible mother. And I can promise you, remember this face, give her a big smile because he's gonna be famous one day, soccer player, rugby player, scientist, we don't know yet, but uh, he's a true inspiration.
Love you lots. Out of here. Bye bye. Lots of love to you, Tando, and your mom. You're in our prayers. These Huawei Real Talk moments are really absolutely moving. We're going to keep them coming. But for now, we say congratulations to our winner, Gatleho, who is this week's winner. And Gatleho walks away with the Huawei P20 Pro plus 10 gig MTN data. Well, this has been Real Talk right here on SABC3. Thank you so much for watching. From me and the team, it's good night. We'll see you again tomorrow. Real Talk is proudly sponsored by Huawei P20 Pro and MTN. Each week for 10 weeks, we're giving away the latest Huawei P20 Pro and 10 gigabytes once-off MTN data to 10 amazing storytellers. All you have to do is share your special moments with us. Follow at Huawei ZA and at MTN ZA and tag us with hashtag Huawei P20 and hashtag Real Talk Moments. We want to see and hear your stories and create lasting connections across the country. Each week there's a different theme, so keep checking our social pages for details and you could be a winner.